How do you encourage yourself and others to adapt? How do you encourage yourself and others to adapt? Well, I believe that if you try to convince people to adapt, um, I think it's the wrong way of going about it. I think you need to inspire. You need to uh, persuade. Innovators don't convince. Innovators persuade. And I think by uh, creating innovations yourself, it, it is just contagious. That's what I've seen with innovation is that once people see other people doing things that are different, um, it inspires others to do the same. So instead of trying to knock down the doors uh, uh, of people, um, start doing it yourself and start innovating yourself. Start showing, not telling uh, what you're going to be doing. And, and um, I, I think it's just a matter of you uh, just starting to experiment and, and, and showing off your examples. And then you will literally persuade others to do so. Well, I'm going to ask you, Lindell, I don't, I don't know, if, you know how you convince other people to do things. Um, you know, any advice that you would give? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm sure there's lots of people in your life that you try to convince people of things. I think it's a matter of just starting with a small, small task or yes. a small object and, and showing the, the value in, in adapting to that and then just build on from there. I love that. I love that. Great advice. Let's keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited about all these questions, by the way. I'm getting so excited. I'm getting so excited that I need to take off my jacket. So let's, let's keep going. What, what else we got here? There's so much change happening. How do you keep up with it all and not get overwhelmed? There is so much change happening. How do we keep up with it all? Well, listen, um, I don't want to tell you this. I'm so sorry to tell you this. But uh, if you thought 2020 was crazy, wait for 2021. Uh, the world is just going to get even crazier. There's going to be a lot more change. And um, the reality is that technology is not going to stop. It is just going to accelerate. So. Um, we almost have to uh, get comfortable with this idea that everything is going to change very quickly. You know, it's funny, like I've been watching this election, right, over the last couple of days and it's not stopping. It's just keep, it just keeps going. And people think that, you know, obviously Biden has a li little bit of a lead. I don't, I don't know what's happened in the last hour, but, uh, you know, people think that, oh, well, things, things will seem will get a little bit more normal after sort of he gets in. But I, I just believe that the improbable is the new normal. Uh, the world is getting a lot small, smaller. Industries are blurring. Technology is becoming a lot more ubiquitous. Change is inevitable. There are new business models, new ways of doing things. So either you get really comfortable with change or this may not be the industry uh, uh, for you. Um, and so that's what I would say is that uh, change is happening. But listen, the reality is, is that some people get overwhelmed with change. And the idea of you know, getting off the bus or on the bus is, is not really... Um, is not as practical. So this is what I would say is um, find the people around you, find the champions around you that can help you navigate change. Uh, whether it's uh, people that are very experienced in their craft or not experienced. Um, I, I always find that people that are, uh, that are younger, that are more tech savvy can help you with this. So find the champions in your life that can help you navigate this change. But it, it, it's starting to develop the mental models around change. Um, I'm, I'm not the mental model guy. I think there's are, there are many people who are unbelievable at this. Uh, I'm, I'm just the innovation guy. Uh, but I would just say, you know, get ready because this is, just the, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Next question. What would you suggest would be a good way to start with older clients who are nervous about adapting? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, when it comes to older clients, um, you know, they're a little bit harder to move, a uh, little bit harder to convince. Um, like I said, again, I think um, it, it's not, innovators don't convince, innovators persuade. And I think one of the best ways of doing that is through education, through information, uh, putting in a way that m will be suitable for them or acceptable to them. Um, I think it's hand-holding as much as we can. I mean, you know, nobody wants a hand-hold in, in a pandemic, but um, um, walking them through it. And what I have noticed is that once you walk people through it and once you um, uh, get through that sort of initial inertia, then people will adopt. You know, I go, I, go, I go back to my mother, you know, and she can't do many things. I, like, she can't do the source button and, and changing the time, but she can go on Zoom and she can use Facebook. In fact, 
She's the reason why Mark Zuckerberg is, is a, a, a multi-billionaire. It's because of her, because she's, she's the only person that I know that's utilizing Facebook every single day. Uh, God bless her. But, you know, she's been able to uh, adopt new ways of d doing things by, you know, s people slowly sort of showing her how to do that. And um, that's what I would say that, I, you know, I, I'm going to go back to you because you might have more experience dealing with um, uh, older clients and maybe how you have navigated. I'd love to hear what you, you have to say around that. I think patience is the key, having some understanding that they're coming at it from a different perspective. So yeah. having the ability to get on the phone and walk them through what the, their browser might look like, for example, and just keep walking them through it. Yeah. Make sure that checking in with them and making sure that they're still comfortable with the change. I love that. I love that. that, that that's, some great, uh, that's some great advice. Let's keep on going. We, we, have some, we have a few more questions. How do you attract and retain innovation talents? How do you uh, r attract and retain innovation talent? Well, you know, uh, traditionally, uh, what people think about when they think about innovation talent, they're like, you know what we should do? We should, uh, we should get a piano and we should get, uh, you know, some M&Ms, some nice lounge chairs, and then people will be convinced to, uh, to work here. We'll get a nice, like, quinoa salad uh, bar. And, uh, you know, people will be comfortable. Um, I believe that the best way of attracting and retaining innovation talent is literally for you to build your own innovation capital. Let me explain what this idea of innovation capital is. Innovation capital is your ability for you, for you to uh, um, create innovations and for you to unlock resources in order to make those ideas happen. Uh, in order to make your ideas happen. Innovation capital is this powerful idea that by sharing innovations and executing against them, that you will be able to work on more innovations and more innovation initiatives. See, the reality is, is that I think if we want to attract innovative talent, that we need to be innovative ourselves. All of this stuff, I mean, it's nice. It's, a, it's aesthetic. But at the end of the day, people want to work with people that are innovative or organizations that are innovative. So that's what I would say is start to build your own innovation capital, flex your own innovation muscles, and then you will start to um, attract innovative innovation capital. I mean, the other thing is this idea of, um, you know, what I call cultural capital, which is this idea that just understanding where the culture is, right? Understanding what, where, what people are paying attention to, uh, paying attention to um, how people are consuming things and being there, right? Um, I, I think that is such a, a great way of attracting talent. I'm, I'm not saying that you have to go on TikTok and like start dancing, uh, but um, I mean, you can do that, <laughs> but it's, it's just understanding where people are and, and being relevant in those particular places. So that's what I would say with that is it, and it, See, it doesn't have anything to do with external. It actually has to do with internal um, and creating an innova innovation engine for yourself. So that's what I would say. Next question. Yes. How, how do you lower clients' expectations for faster response time and higher returns? How do you lower clients' expectations for faster response time and higher returns? Well, y you know, the reality is, is that um, you can't actually lower people's expectations for faster stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's done. Like the fact that you can press a button and something will be delivered to your door, like a, a, a package, food, human beings, whatever you need, it's delivered to your door. You cannot uh, 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 lower people's expectations for speed. People expect things to be fast. But what you can do is change and reframe the problem. You see, many people think about the problem as how do I make things faster and maybe you can't do that. So reframe the question, how do I make things better for folks? I'll give you a famous example by a really great marketer. His name is Rory Sutherland. He asked a very interesting question. About 15 years ago, how do we make the journey to Paris better? And they came up with a very good engineering solution which was to spend six billion pounds building completely new tracks from London to the coast. Uh, you know, when you get into a train, people expect it to, you know, be on time. They expect it to be fast. They expect it to, you know, get to a particular line at a particular time. And in order to make the train faster, uh, what you typically need to do is spend millions of dollars trying to make it maybe a five minutes faster, right? Better rails, better, I don't know, I know nothing about trains, but millions of dollars to create the infrastructure for the trains to go faster. 
But what if you reframe the question? What if you said, how do I make the train ride more enjoyable? And one of the ways of making the train ride more enjoyable is getting uh, really beautiful people, hot looking guys and girls to serve <laughs> carvassier and champagne in the train. And people would want the train to slow down because they would enjoy the experience so much. So it's this idea of how do we reframe the problem so that um, th they are actually expecting something better as opposed to something faster. So that's what I would say uh, uh, around that. And I, I think the idea of lower returns, I mean, at the end of the day, that comes down to um, just it, solid education and information about, uh, uh, about what people are getting into, right? And I mean, I, mean I, I hope people don't expect going into something uh, and immediately expecting you know, them to uh, become gazillionaires. Uh, I'm assuming most people tr try to. I'm not a wealth advisor, but I'm, I'm assuming some people do that. Um, but it, that, that goes to great information and advice. Uh, do, I think we are out. You know what? I think we're out of time. We, we, we had so much fun. I, I could be here all day with you. But I wanna, I wanna thank Lindell again. Uh, a virtual applause for, for her. Please, thank you. Thank you. Uh, she was great. Thank you to everyone. Um, you know, there's a, there's a series happening, and I think this was the first of, of many virtual sessions to come. Uh, RBC has been putting together a, an amazing event. Thank you so much for having me. And um, if there's any questions, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, I can um, connect with you there. So thank you so much for your time. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I bet the next video is gonna be even better. So hit subscribe and we'll chat in the comments.